So we've all know that the Honor V5, the Z Fold 7 and the X Fold Vivo X Fold 5, are not the Pro, I'm going to say Pro there, but it's not the Pro, just the 5, because I'm used to the 3, have been out now for, for a month or two. And so we know that the, the V5's only been out in the European market for a week or so, or two weeks now. So what I want to do, I've had, I've had all three phones for a while and I'm very keen to find out what the difference are in terms of performance. Because with the, they've got a variety of different chips in them. For example, we've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 in, in the Vivo X Fold 5. And we've got the Snapdragon 8 Elite uh, for Galaxy in the X Z Fold 7. And we've got the Snapdragon Standard 8 Elite in the Honor V5. Uh, I'll do some benchmarks. I don't do normally benchmarks, but I think benchmarks are really useful to show you how the phones perform under a lot of stress. I know most people wouldn't push them that hard, but I think it's useful to see how hot they get, for example, and how they perform. So let's get into this. Uh, sit back, relax. Let's find out what happens in this in this real-world test of these phones and how they perform. Uh, can the, does the thinness affect their performance in the real world? So just before we get into the performance side of things, because I've done the on a V5 versus Z Fold 7 comparison in terms of hardware, but I've not compared the X Fold 5 directly with the Z Fold 7 and the V5. So I just want to talk about um, the sort of design differences between the phones. So we, as we know, the Z Fold 7 and the V5 are the thinnest of the two phones, and that's the big push in the marketing side of it, that they are the thinnest phones. Whether you care about that or not, let me know down in the comments below. I don't particularly care that much after using both phones for a few months. But I, one thing I would say is that the Vivo does feel a bit thicker when you use it. You notice the difference when you pick up the Vivo compared to the Honor, for example, because the Honor is so thin and it's incredible how thin they've got. And at the launch, it was amazing to see some tests and stuff about how strong it is. So does the Vivo feel much different? It just feels a bit thicker. So. Obviously, there's there's not a, there's a price difference between the phones a little bit. I think the Vivo is a little bit cheaper, not by much. It's very similar, um, but in terms of uh, just one thing to bear in mind is that the the Honor and the Samsung do feel th noticeably thinner than the Vivo. Uh, on paper, there's it's not that much difference, but it just feels like when you pick it up. In terms of design, now the apart from the thinness, the Honor and the V5, the Honor and the uh, X Fold Five feel very similar. They've got massive camera bumps on the back. Um, they've got slightly different aspect ratios on the front screen. So whether you prefer a taller front screen and a less width on the front screen, it comes down to personal preference. I prefer the Honor's front screen to the Vivo X Fold 5's front screen, but just uh, just whatever you prefer. Um, and the Z Fold 7 obviously is very similar to the Vivo in terms of its aspect ratio. It's very similar, so you won't notice much difference, but it does feel noticeably thinner and noticeably lighter. One thing I should point out on both these, so let's we'll Introduce the phones on specs. I think that's a good place to start. I mentioned already about the CPU differences. So the Vivo X, X Fold 5 is the one that is the sort of dark horse in this competition, I would say, because it has the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, so it's last year's or the year before's CPU. So it's not a bad CPU. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 is not a bad CPU, but it is outpaced by the Galaxy for Galaxy A Elite and also the standard A Elite as well. So in terms of memory, we've got, this is the 2512 gigabyte model from China, which has the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So it's got a full on 16 gig of RAM, uh, which is better than Z Fold 7. So Z Fold 7 is available in 256 gigabytes and 512 and a terabyte. If you get the 256 and the 512, you get 12 gigabytes of RAM. If you get the one terabyte, you get 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this is the 512 gigabyte model with 12 gigabytes of RAM. So will that make a difference in the test? Let's find out. I don't know. Do we actually need 16 gigabytes of RAM? I don't know if we do or not, to be honest, because I've used phones with 12, 16, and not really noticed much of a difference. But the Honor is the one that's available globally in one model, which is 500, 512 gigabytes of RAM. Sorry, 512 gigabytes of storage. Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM. So very similar to the Vivo X Fold 5, but with the Snapdragon 8 Elite in it. So they're kind of, that's just kind of a brief introduction to the phones. I know if I've done this before, but I wanted to do it before we go into the performance test. And uh, skip this part if you, if you know about it before, don't, don't worry about it. But uh, let's get into this actual performance test now. We'll start off with looking at the benchmarks. So I want to see how all these phones perform in the benchmark test and what sort of scores they get and how hot they get. I'm more, so I'm more interested in how they perform, whether they actually complete the tests and how hot they get. because. I worry about the thinness of these chassis. Will it actually affect the phones itself in daily use? If you do do a lot of gaming, a lot of video editing, because they do get quite warm sometimes. I would say that the Honor V5 is the warmest of the of the lot so far, but we'll see in this test how warm they get. So let's get into this test and find out um, how warm they get.
So I've just run some uh, benchmarks and some uh, gaming tests on the Z Fold 7, the Honor Magic V5 and the Viva X Fold 5 and the results are quite surprising. So the Honor Magic V5 performed admirably in all the tests. It didn't get too hot. The highest temperature recorded was 44, 43, which is perfectly normal for a Snapdragon 8 Elite under load. So it's obviously got a decent cooling system in it. I've tried it folded and unfolded and it ran the same on both. The, th the benchmarking and the 3D mark came out the highest. It just performed admirably in all the tests. So if you're after something with performance in mind I'd, and you want a foldable, I think the Honor Magic V5 is the one that's going to be winning and the one you should go for at the moment because it's kind of going for the test. The Z Fold 7 surprised me. So it, it, it stayed relatively cool. So the thermal system in it when it's unfolded on the 3D Mark was okay. Then I ran uh, some real life gaming test. So the 3D Mark results were, it wasn't particularly high scoring in it. It did actually come out quite low compared to the... Um, Z Fold 7 and the, so it got 4830 and the Z Fold, uh, sorry, the, the Vivo achieved a score of 4257. So considering how much more power the, this has got over the Snapdragon 8 Elite and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and this, it's not that high, it's got much, much difference in the scoring here. And the, so the lowest loop, this was the lowest scoring of, of the phones in, in the 3D Mark test and that will doesn't surprise you, it's got a slower chip in it, but actually the difference in, in, in it was not that much higher. And stability in, in this on the v, Vivo was actually higher, so it achieved 67% stability, which means basically that the frame rates and the temperature all stayed more stable than the actual, um, uh, than the, the Galaxy Z Fold 7, which was about 62% stability. So I, I, what if Samsung compromised here on this thinness? Are we going for, you know, They've taken the S Pen out. It's not as running hotter and it's not performing as well. So it's going to thermal throttle more than than the Honor. So Honor have actually achieved more out of the V5 than I think than the Galaxy than the Samsung have with the Z Fold Seven. Yes, it looks great and it's it's a thin phone, but it's got relatively bad battery in it. It's got a Snapdragon 8 Elite that just doesn't perform that well uh, under load because of the thermal efficiencies. Where the Honor Magic V5 seems to perform fine in all situations. So it's got a decent thermal system in it for the, for the thinness and it has a pen as well. And the Vivo even, which has um, got a bigger battery and it just has a 6,000 milliamp battery, it's performing slightly better or not too bad compared to the Z Fold 7 and it's even cheaper than the Z Fold 7. So does the 16 gig of RAM help more than the Snapdragon 8 Elite? You know, this has only got 12 gig in it and it just seemed to show in certain tests. And one thing that's interesting in the gaming test on weathering waves in the on the Z Fold 7 was that it really got hot. It got to about 50 degrees nearly on some of the tests, 47 degrees. You could feel the heat coming off the back of it here. Also, it was dropping for, so I set it on to full settings, all the same, all the phones were on full settings on default performance mode. And you could tell that the, so I didn't I didn't put the V5 in performance, I didn't need it, I didn't need to go, it was, I put it on full settings, um, it put the frame rates unlimited, so 60 frame rates per second. And you could tell that the Z Fold 7 ran them fine at first. And after about five, six minutes of gaming, it just started to drop those frame rates. You started to get a stuttering effect on full settings on weathering waves. And it started to, which a Snapdragon 8 Elite shouldn't do really. So it was getting really hot. So you could tell the chip was thermal throttling down to keep the chip from overheating. And actually the performance wasn't that great. It was it was quite sluggish and, and not that good. So the results on here kind of show in real life as well that the, the Z Fold 7 for gaming isn't the best bet from what I found anyway. It doesn't seem to... I mean, it'll run the games, but you have to sort of knock it right down in sort of performance level because of the thinness of the phone. Whereas the V5 ran everything flawlessly in the, in the weather and waves effect, weather and waves game. It had full uh, unlimited frame rates, everything set on high, it ran fine. Uh, no, it didn't even get that hot, to be honest. And the Vivo, the same, that didn't drop frame rates either, stayed at 60 frame rates per second and ran everything fine. So the Vivo and the Honor Magic V5 are the best, I, I think, of my tests for gaming and performance tests, and they seem to run... Uh, relatively cool. The Viva got quite hot in the 3D Mark test, but it still managed to, didn't actually thermal throttle too much, which was quite interesting. Whereas the V5, the V7, sorry, the Fold 7 did seem to thermal throttle quite a lot in the gaming test. So interesting findings. Let me know your thoughts. What do you think about this? Do you think, would you go for, which phone would you choose? Which one would you think you would best view? And do you think that gaming would be good on a foldable? Or would you go rather go for a dedicated gaming phone or a candy bar phone? Uh, and what do you think of the performance test I've done? So let me know. Uh, subscribe, a like, and a comment would be great, guys. Thank you, and I will speak to you next time.